last review of the Dark Knight Trilogy. Today, we're reviewing The Dark Knight Rises by Christopher Nolan. <coughs> <coughs> uh, well, that's going to be the last time I'm going to be doing that voice. So, sorry for the delay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back, and we're going to be reviewing The Dark Knight Rises on our journey to Batman v Superman. So, Dark Knight Rises take, takes place eight months after The Dark Knight. Harvey Dent has passed. Um, Ratman has become a fugitive and retired. He wants Gotham to remember Harvey Dent as a hero, not a monster. And, of course, the same people reprise their roles. Christian Bale as Batman. Michael Caine as Alfred. Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon. And newcomers to the movie, um, Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. And Tom Hardy as Bane. So... Let me just say, this movie was, it was ter I'm not saying, t okay, it was a terrific movie, it was really, really well done, it was good, it may have some, like, plot twists and turns that you never expected to see happen, but I prefer, it, it was a really good movie, and, to be honest, I don't think there was any problem with it, I mean, some parts had me confused, some parts I knew what happened, but, overall, it was really well done but anyway let's get down to the main plot of the storyline so bruce has has retired for eight months and he hasn't put on the cape and cowl for so long he decides to go back into gotham after he hears commissioner gordon has been shot by bane who is the new terrorist in town and who who doesn't want who wants terrorists in gotham city so bruce um once Bruce's leg has been broken, so he tries to get his leg healed, and he finds Commissioner Gordon um, in the hospital, and he says the Batman needs to come back. So he decides to get himself back out there into shape so he can stop whatever mess is going on. Alfred, on the other hand, is telling him to back away because here's this crazy thing about this. When Bruce and Batman begins, when Bruce went away for so long, Alfred said he never wanted him to come back. He just wished that he could have a life of his own without Batman, without um, capes and gadgets and special toys. He just wanted Bruce to have a regular, normal life. Now that was, that's kind of like a, a shocker right there. That's, I never expect that to come out of Alfred's mouth whatsoever. But anyway... Bruce goes to Lucius and gets all the special gear he needs, and he obtains this new vehicle called the Bat, which is like a helicopter jet type of vehicle. It's really, it's a really sick vehicle, if if I might say. So, um, what's it called? Bane? Um, he actually walks into the stock exchange to get some data from Dagger Industries, and let's be honest. He's trying to just expose. Well, Bane is just a terrorist. What what else is there to say about the guy anyway? He has a mask. He talks weird. Just just like this. I don't know. I was wondering when would you show up, Mister Wayne? But don't get me wrong. <laughs> it was hilarious, but it was cool at the same time. I thought they were gonna go with the traditional look, like the luchador mask. And the venom addiction but this take this was really good i had no problem with it so anyway catwoman is trying to clear her name and so she tricks batman into sending him into the sewers where he fights bane for the first time and let me just say that fight was just wrecked that was a crazy crazy fight i mean there was no music whatsoever Batman just tries laying strike on strike on strike, and Bane just counterattacks every single move. He even he knew everything, of course, Bane, because Bane knows sec on Batman's secret identity. Anyhow, he's like the only well, him and Hugo Strange are the only villains who know about Batman's secret identity. But anyway, so he does the ultimate, the ultimate final blow, the one from Nightfall. The backbreaker that and let me just say something when I was watching that fight for the first time I already knew the fight was gonna end like that 
Once I saw him on the ground and he started picking him up, I'm like, oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your body. And just, I knew that was gonna, it was gonna end in a terrible, terrible way. So, so he sends Batman to this prison where he grew up and he found a child named Talia, who is, Tal if you guys know, Talia is Ra's al Ghul's daughter. And just so many twists and just so many plot holes from what happened between Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rises. It's just so confusing to tie in. And then I see Ra's al well, Bruce sees like a hallucination of Ra's al Ghul. I'm thinking, I thought, you were I thought he was dead, but he is still dead. Because I didn't think... There was no use of the Lazarus Pit in um in this trilogy because the Lazarus Pit is what gives Ra's al Ghul eternal life. So Bane goes back to Gotham and he he pretty much destroys the place. I mean he 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 destroyed a football um field. He blows up all the bridges in Gotham so no one could escape. He puts the whole city under martial law, and oh my gosh, it was just so, so terrifying. They even tried to get outside help, and it's just a massacre. They even want Commissioner Gordon dead. The reason why, because he has a note, well, he had like a speech in his pocket because he didn't, explaining what really happened on the day Harvey Dent died. And now the people want him dead because he had this secret in for whole, for the whole time, knowing good and well Harvey Dent died a monster. And now people want to kill him, and Bane releases all the crime people that Harvey Dent put away for the past years, and now they come out and wreck, start wrecking the whole the whole city. So that Bruce is in this cave. In terms of the only way out is to climb climb up this huge wall and let me just say this is probably the most memorable scene in this entire movie so he finds out that Talia actually made the climb without the rope Bruce climbs with the rope like twice now let me just say so if that was me climbing that wall I wouldn't even survive I would just probably I'll just rot in that prison and I would never come out. So the um the prison doctor told him to do the climb without the rope. So he climbs without the rope, and as soon as he ma has to make that one jump to the other side, so he can get out the um cave completely, bats start flying and symbolizing he can do this. Which and the prisoners are chanting a foreign word that means rise, which is what this whole film was about. So he actually climbs out, the, climbs out of the pit, heads back to Gotham so he can save his city. And so he returns, forgives Catwoman for what he did to him. <sighs> Apparently, I don't know why would he do that. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention something. The cops got stuck underground after um, what Bane did to the football field. He re Catwoman re saves the cops. An all-out fight begins with the mercenaries of the Le League of Assassins and the GCPD. Batman comes back, and Bane, him and Bane duke it out, and he gives Bane the fight of his life. Like, he keeps punching Bane in the mask, and all the pipes keep coming out completely. More and more, I'm like, he's not gonna survive this, because I know he probably can't live without that mask. And he just dukes him into the neck, into into a building and it was just so epic to see and he said then you have my permission to die but here's the, now here now here's the plot twist there's this character named Miranda Tate I may I've forgotten who the actress is who plays her and she's French apparently so Batman thinks Bane is the child of Ra's al Ghul but Miranda surprises Batman saying it's not him I mean she is Tally al Ghul, which was, I should have seen that coming, actually. I should have known from the start that it was Talia, because as a huge Batman fan, I should have known that. 
But I didn't, I really did not expect Talia to be in that movie. That was like the major plot twist of the film. So Talia um, plans to continue her father's work. So they had a, Wayne Enterprises had, had a, a nuclear, a nuclear reactor made. Then Bane turned it into an atomic bomb. So they, people have been trying to struggle and struggle to prevent this bomb from blowing up. Bruce, I mean, Batman kills Talia with the help of Catwoman, and the bomb is still going to go off, so Batman uses the bat, drives it out of the city, and then it explodes, killing Batman with it. But it doesn't end there, because Bruce turns out to be still alive. He had the bat set on autopilot. I'm guessing they should... I wish they could have shown that somewhere. I guess he probably ejected it out of the bat and let it explode. And just, what, he probably swam back to Gotham. Because that's probably... That's definitely a long, long swimming, swimming distance, apparently. But, anyway. John Blake re retires from the force. And he... And turns out, ironically, his first name is Robin. Apparently. So he goes back, he finds the cave, and I guess he starts to inherit the bat, the, the bat cave and becomes the new hero. Bruce and Selina are having a life together. The Wayne Manor becomes an orphanage. And from there, that's the end of the, that's the, end of the Dark Knight trilogy. Whew, that was a long way to explain the film. But overall, overall it was just... It was well done, it was a good way to end it, despite the many plot holes that it had. I give this film a 4 out of 5, so, because it was, it was really, really decent. So, anyway, what do you guys think of The Dark Knight Rises? Did you think it was good? Do you think it was bad? Do you think it was in between? If you want to see the reviews of my past, if you want to see the reviews of the past Dark Knight trilogy films I did, I'll put those in the link in below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And until then, I am vengeance. I am darkness. I am Blackwing. Stay golden.